Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be making some art with this little stationery collection I have here. So firstly I have one of those clicker pens which changes colour like lots of different ballpoint pens in one. I also have these four mini highlighters that come in the shape of nail polish and next I have five mini glitter gel pens which come in a unicorn pouch because unicorns are cool and finally I have these three little mini pencils with a funky eraser on top and all of these items were less than two pounds so let's get on with it. So I began by sketching out my design using one of the little pencils onto a piece of standard card. This is just cheap card that you can get in most craft and art shops, not expensive. But I wanted to use card rather than paper just because I wanted to give the piece a bit of a chance because I knew that I would be layering up with the ballpoint pen quite a lot and I knew that this might break printer paper. So yeah, once I had used the pencil to sketch out, I used the ballpoint pen over the top. I didn't do too much sketching I just wanted to place the parts of the face properly with the pencil and I wanted to use the pen a lot more because using ballpoint pens is actually quite good for drawing because it makes you commit to your lines a lot more than you would with a pencil because with a pencil you can keep erasing but with a ballpoint pen you're very committed to your lines. So you might be able to tell from the reference image in the bottom corner which is poking its way into the video that I am attempting to draw Jazza from the channel Draw With Jazza. And if you don't know who Jazza is, firstly, where have you been? But secondly, he is a really big YouTuber. He does some really, really great art pieces. He tries to be really ambitious and epic with his challenges. He manages to create some really cool pieces of work with things like condiments or blue tack. And they always really turn out really epic and he seems to have so much fun. So I thought that would be a good subject matter for this challenge. And I also thought it would be a good idea to draw some more men. I'm not so good at drawing men and I try and shy away from the things that I'm not good at and stick to my comfort zone. So I wanted to push myself with both the subject matter and the materials here. So for Jazz's face, I mainly use the ballpoint pen. The ballpoint pen had a bit of a strange mix of colors. It had two pinks, a purple, a black, a bluey green color and a yellow. And that was it. But I tried to utilize them as best as I could. I used the yellow and the two pinks for the face for the main kind of shading of the face and I kind of layered them up to kind of make a semi realistic skin tone. I'm not sure how well this worked but I think for what I had available it looks okay. I used the darker colours such as the purple and the darker pink for the shadows for example in the ear and the mouth and for his hair I mainly used the yellow colour because he's got kind of a sandy colour hair and some of the greeny blue colour and quite a bit of black. I don't normally use black in my artwork to shade but because I had a very limited colour palette within this pen I decided it was okay here. So I took quite a lot of time building up the layers on Jazz's face and hair kind of using different directions of lines almost like cross hatching and just kind of layering up the shadows and this took quite a while and I also kind of decided to embrace the scratchiness that the ballpoint pen gave and kind of just kind of emphasize that a little bit more and kind of go with that because I usually work with alcohol based markers or sometimes acrylic and I like to blend things quite smoothly but here this wasn't possible so I just had to embrace that and go with the flow. So I had this idea for this challenge a while ago. I was in um, a shop called Wilkinson's. It's kind of a bit of a everything kind of shop and they have a kind of a kids art and crafty section and I thought it would be a cool idea to try making some art from their little pocket money stationery. So I bought the pen, the pencils with the erasers on top and the um, glitter gel pens from there. They were about two pound each, I think, and I had the set of highlighters lying around. I'd already bought those from a place called Home Bargains, and I thought it'd be fun to kind of mix them all together and try and create some art with them. I thought this would be a really fun challenge, and it shows that you can make art with anything. You don't have to spend lots of money. So now I'm layering up the hair a little bit more. I actually think that I could have done a bit better with this because it looks a little bit rushed. I probably should have taken a bit more care to the direction of the hair and the deeper shadows and the highlights to kind of make it look a little less random and scruffy. But you know, that's okay. That's kind of the point of experimenting and doing kind of portrait studies is to kind of look at your work and then look at what you can improve next time. And also looking at it, your work through a camera really helps you to improve because I'm looking at some of the proportions now through the camera as I'm recording this voiceover and I can see what I need to do better next time because sometimes looking at it just in real life you can't always see these things so that's a tip there if you want to kind of see what's wrong with your artwork and you can't quite tell it's good to either film it obviously or take a photo of it or sometimes even put it in a mirror that also helps too So 
So now I'm moving on to his neck and if you remember I said earlier that using a ballpoint pen is quite helpful when you're practicing drawing because you commit to the lines. Well I had to commit to a couple of dodgy lines in this because I decided to try and draw the subtle kind of shadowy crease marks in the neck and I did them way too dark and way too obvious and they look quite bad at first, they do look a bit better later on, but I really had to try really hard to kind of correct this mistake, but I obviously couldn't erase it, so that's why I didn't want to do too much with the pencil, I wanted to try and do the pen to push myself, but yeah, I couldn't erase it once I'd done, so I had to kind of work with the layers and work with the other shadows to kind of match it a little bit more. But on reflection, I shouldn't have added these lines in because they look way too harsh. So now I am colouring in Jazz's shirt. I am using the bluey green colour. I say bluey green because the clicker thing is green but it actually comes out blue which is a bit odd but never mind. I mixed it with the purple as well to kind of give it a bit more depth and a bit more shadow and then I went over the shadowed areas with the blue glitter gel pen and kind of mixed it out again. And I think this worked quite well because it gave a bit more depth to the shirt and it gave it a little bit of a different texture to his hair and his face. So I used the cross hatch effect again on the shirt because I firstly wanted to blend out the shadows a little bit, I didn't want them to look too blocked and I also wanted to kind of phase out the shirt into the background, kind of merge it rather than colour the shirt completely to the edges of the paper because I thought, to be honest, this would take a bit too long and I would probably get bored and I didn't want to mess it up. So overall I think I really enjoyed this challenge, it certainly was a challenge to try and create something with these really limiting but funky supplies. I think I would do something like this again and I'm definitely going to use the ballpoint pen a little bit more in my practicing, in my sketchbook to try and kind of push myself to draw better because like I said you have to commit to the lines and there is no opportunity for erasing so you don't spend time and time and time again erasing a piece and giving up on it because you erase too much you just have to kind of go for it. So now I'm using the mini highlighters to create some paint splats behind Jazza to create a bit of a funky looking background and I think this works because it gives it a bit of an 80s vibe and I quite like how the colours kind of pop I also use the mini gel pens to outline these and I use the ballpoint pen on top to give it a little bit of extra shading. I didn't capture all of these because my camera ran out of battery but I think you get the idea. So do let me know in the comments below how you think I did with this challenge or whether you've tried this yourself and what bits of stationery you used. And also if you're new here, welcome. My name is Katie. I make art videos and I upload every single Thursday and the occasional video on a Sunday. So please do feel free to subscribe and join us here. And if you like this video, you know, emotionally, please leave a like down below as that really helps me out. So finally I am unfortunately, I'm very sorry if you think this is cheating, but I am adding a slight fleck of detail with the white gel pen, mainly in the shine of the eye and the odd bit of hair and the outlines of the paint splats to make them pop a bit more. Mainly this is because I forgot to leave the white space. I was initially going to leave the white space in the eye to make them look shiny, but I just forgot and I couldn't leave it without adding these. But I really tried to make it as minimal as possible. So yeah, sorry about that.
So here is the final result. I'm really happy with how this piece turned out. It's not perfect, there's still some improvement needed, but I'm still really happy with how I use the materials. You can't quite see the glittery gel pen that well on this camera, so what I will do is after this is uploaded, I will be putting a boomerang of this piece on my Instagram story, so feel free to go and check that out. But that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye for now.